Mark Rogers TV trying to hit as many positional breakdowns as we possibly can get to across the sun country. And this is when we talk about a breakdown. This one was just Dan broken down in 2015. Quarterback position at Boston College. We bring in Dan Rubin from BC Interruption. And the statistics, if you go quarterback by quarterback, Dan, it just takes us back to the 1950s, doesn't it? It was bad. I mean, it was it was bad. It was it was even worse if you actually had to watch it. Um, the the good part for the majority of the of the nation was that they they didn't have to watch it every week. They just had to look at the tweets and and look at the the stats and and make their remarks on social media. But if you sat down and watched it, boy, it was bad. And, and the thing is, is I don't think anybody's breaking any new ground to, if, if you sat down and actually looked at Steve Adazio in, in, in across the table and said, boy, your offense was terrible last year. He'd probably be the first one that says, well, yeah, it was. And, and it started at the quarterback position. Uh, it was a season that just, for whatever reason, everything that could have gone wrong did. They had a, a quarterback that they were going to bring along in Darius Wade. He got hurt. They went to a couple of true freshmen in Troy Flutie and Jeff Smith. They never developed and probably should have never been on the field. And uh, going into the last season when they said, well, if we get one injury, we're going to be in some trouble. Well, they got the one injury early. They were in trouble the rest of the season, and it was just downhill from there. So it was, uh, it was a bad year, and there's no other way around it. There's no way to hide it. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Um, we can la hopefully laugh about it, but uh, it was a terrible year for the Boston College quarterback position. So it wasn't difficult for Adazio to figure, despite the number of quarterbacks that I have available to me, I better go off campus and see if I can at least bring in some competition for Darius Wade. So Patrick Tolles comes in. Nobody's going to confuse him with a Heisman Trophy candidate, but he's had some decent success at Kentucky. Not so much this past season. Nine touchdowns and 14 interceptions is a little bit alarming, but big 6'5 kid. And the times that I've seen him play, he's played very well against SEC defenses. And you know what, a guy like Tolls, I, I hearken back to the offense that Boston College ran with Andre Williams in the backfield. They had an opportunity uh, with Andre Williams to set up Chase Reddick to simply manage the game. Don't mess everything up. Be a type of guy that, that's not going to go out and win you any games if you need to have him throw 40 times, but at the exact same time, not lose you games when he has to throw 30 times either. Uh, so they go out and they get Patrick Tolls, who can fulfill that role. Now, the offense is going to be substantially different uh, with a new offensive coordinator, but you bring in tolls and you bring in Scott Loeffler. And instead of trying to patchwork over uh, last year's mistakes or try to work with what you got, you just hit the reset button. It's like the game of Madden when you're losing 28, nothing in the first quarter and just hit the reset button. That's what Boston college is doing. Uh, they bring in Scott Loeffler. They have Patrick tolls again. He's not going to be confused with the next coming of Matt Ryan. Um, at least not until we see him. For all we know, he could be in the right situation and, and elevate the game of everyone around him. Uh, but it's really an unknown with, with tolls coming in. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, especially when you needed a lot of change at the position. And they did exactly that. They blew up everything that they had and have reconstructed it from the ground up, putting Darius Wade on the back burner a little bit and bringing in Patrick Tolls and Scott Loeffler as the offensive coordinator. Fortunately, Dan, you're Boston College, and with your defense, you're not losing 28 nothing. It's like nine to nothing. Is what is what it is at that point. Uh, Darius Wade got the two starts against the inferior foes in Maine and Howard. Then he gets hurt against Florida State, so we haven't seen him on the field too much. Can you kind of compare what Tolls brings to the table versus uh, Wade in this competition? You know, Darius Wade, the, the one thing I'll say is that the Howard game, I think, set him back, and we'll never really know how much it set him back. Uh, because Boston College was on the team, was on the field with a game in a game with a team that was completely inferior and had no business being in that game. Uh, they scheduled it simply because they had to at Boston College. New Mexico State had canceled off that game. That's a whole other conversation. They bought them out. They scrambled for an opponent, and the only team that took the paycheck was Howard. Howard came up. It fulfilled a requirement. It didn't count, so barely filled a requirement on the schedule. Um, and it, it, it was, it was a disaster. I, I mean, it was a disaster for everybody involved. Boston college rolled them. Uh, you take out just on athleticism, a guy like Wade who only plays maybe a quarter in that game, maybe a few series. And it did him absolutely no good because the next game in was Florida state. So in Darius Wade, he is a totally incomplete set now for, or an incomplete 
case study for going on two seasons. Uh, you go back to his first year, he backed up Tyler Murphy, did not see a lot of time, comes in, plays against Maine. Okay, it's Maine. It's an FCS team. Plays against Howard barely. That game's a disaster uh, because Boston College destroyed a team that didn't belong on the field with them. And then they go against Florida State, and he breaks his ankle. He's out for the season. So we're never really going to know what could have been with Darius Wade at the helm last year um, if it would have been different. Now, how does that compare to Patrick Tolles? Well, Wade at least has the rep with has the reputation of being a guy who can be a dual threat type quarterback in an office that offense that Steve Adazio would have liked to have run. Um, that's not something people really want to hear because they, they think about last year's offense and say, well, Adazio had his offense and look what happened. They finished 127th uh, in the nation. Well, the, the fact remains is that Darius Wade wasn't a part of that offense last year for the most part, and we'll never know if he, how good he could have been. So you compare that with Tolles, who's coming in as a one-year stopgap, and maybe with Loeffler, this is now, let's reboot on Wade. We'll work with him. We'll get him back healthy. He was very good in the spring game. He threw for 170 odd yards, no touchdowns. Cause why do we want a touchdown with Boston college offense? Even in the, even in the spring game, we don't need touchdowns. Uh, but he showed a lot of skill, showed a lot out there through, threw it all over the field. He was, he was creating a lot of opportunities with his receiving core, which is not something we're used to hearing and goes out and competes. He actually looked better than Patrick tolls in the spring game. So how's he compare? Well, I think Tolles is still going to be the starter because he's a fifth-year senior. He's the guy who's supposed to be there. Uh, but at the same time, don't sleep on Darius Wade. He's still there. He's still got some experience, and he still knows what Steve Adazio is expecting, possibly more than Patrick Tolles. So he'll have an opportunity, whether or not it's this year, is another set of circumstances. All right. And if you flip the touchdowns and interceptions, you have the – production from Patrick Tolles the season before where he threw 14 touchdowns with the nine picks. And then if we see John Fadul on the field again this year, you know, you're in trouble. Uh, one touchdown, four picks really got his only big reps in the passing game against NC state. He actually threw for some yardage, but the three picks were the undoing in a 24, eight loss. Boy, I, you know what? I love John Fadul and I love him for all the, all the wrong reasons. He's uh he played, he played so hard. I mean, he gave you everything in his body. He gave his body, wound up with a concussion uh, at some point late in the year. Wound up throwing the ball, I think, 35 times against NC State because at that point the offense had derailed, exploded, burnt to the ground, and then we were just doing – I don't know what they were doing, but they were they, they wound up throwing the ball 35 times. Um, he's a guy who, who will give you his soul. But the problem is he doesn't have much talent to go along with that soul. He was a walk-on freshman, uh, which, you know, in a Division I Power Five conference, I don't think you want a walk-on freshman starting. Um, it doesn't matter who that is. Uh, when you have the amount of scholarships you can give out, you need to have a scholarship quarterback back there. Um, but Fadul gave you everything that he could when he was out on the field, sometimes beyond the limits of what he should have been giving. Um which endeared him to the fans, and, and it made a lot of people love him. I mean, he's a great kid, a uh, local kid out of Wellesley, Massachusetts, played prep uh, prep college before walking on at BC, a uh, prep junior college, I should say, or, or prep school. And you know what? He's a great guy from what I understand. But if he's on the field again, that's a disaster. Uh, you, you don't want him on the field. You want him to be pushing the offense. You want him to be there as a great locker room guy but you really don't want to be losing uh, losing down to your third quarterback again this year. And we also understand that Troy Flutie and Jeff Smith will be playing that position. I'm trying to think of the name of it, that where, where the guys, they, they run out and they're not close to the linemen and where everybody else lines up for Boston College in the middle of the field, those guys that stand out near the sideline. What, what are those? <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't I use guess those. you've got a couple of those possibly. Uh, th those are guys who, oh, those are, those are the skinny blockers. Those aren't the big daddy blockers <laughs> on the offensive line. Okay. Yeah, uh, Jeff Smith and Troy Flutie are officially on the roster now as wide receivers. Uh, that's a whole other discussion you and I will have at another time on the wide receiver. Uh, wide receiver uh, uh, I can't, category we'll go with, but that'll, that'll tease a, a future segment. I appreciate that you uh, caught my my uh, nod there. Yeah, we can get to that at some other point. I understand Anthony Brown is a, a bright spot uh, for the future, but probably will redshirt this season. Sure hope he does. Uh, we, we saw what happened when he had to play a true freshman last year and saw that a couple of times over. So 
sure hope that Anthony Brown is uh, a name that we're never talking about on the roster this year. Gets to just absorb everything. He's got talent. He's supposed to be better than Darius Wade was on the recruiting thing, on the whole recruiting thing. Uh, Three star type guy. You out recruit Temple in Northwestern, which everyone says, all right, you're out recruited Temple. That's a big deal because Temple, uh, they were good last year. And not only that, but you out out recruited essentially the program that Steve Adazio built uh, down there at Temple. All those guys who were winning at Temple were his recruits. Uh, so he's a, so it's a good thing that you get him in there, but at the same time, uh, true freshman, I hope he never sees the field this year. Yeah, that would not be a good thing, but uh, I can't envision a scenario that's going to trump, pardon that uh, expression in this presidential year, but uh, the 2015 quarterback situation at BC. I, I think that's going to be historic, and hopefully, Dan, for your for your mental makeup it's going to stay historic and we're not going to see the likes of it uh anytime soon all right dan rubin from bc interruption helping us out on the bc quarterback situation for 2016 thanks dan yeah